So during this lab, we're going to be discussing DNA and looking at the different structures of DNA, how it's put together, uh, looking at the nucleotides that are the monomers of DNA and how they're put together. <clears throat> we're then going to do uh, an isolation of the DNA found in a strawberry and actually see DNA, a big clump of it. Um, but before we get to all this, let's just give you some background on actual DNA uh, and make sure that you are ready for the lab itself. So DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, later, we will learn about another nucleic acid, which is RNA, and RNA is ribonucleic acid. So by the name of this deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, it means that it is missing an oxygen that is not found on RNA. Uh, so that'll be a, a difference between those two molecules, but tonight or this week we will be dealing with DNA itself. So DNA is the chemical compound that passes hereditary information from generation to generation. When parents create offspring, uh, they are doing so by passing on the DNA sequence that they have in their cells to the offspring cells. Uh, there are different ways of doing this. Uh, when it comes to asexual re uh, reproduction, <clears throat> this is when it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, the DNA is the entire genome, uh, which is all of the DNA, is being passed to the offspring. Uh, when it comes to sexual reproduction, uh, which is how we do it, uh, and all mammals and lots of eukaryotic organisms, <clears throat> this is the combining of two genomes, 50% uh, from the mother, 50% from the father, if it's in humans, uh, and the combination of the two um, to create a full genome of the offspring. And we'll talk about this much later when it comes to mitosis and meiosis, uh, cell reproduction, um, and sexual reproduction, things like that. Um, and I guess <clears throat> next week, our lab will be on how uh, DNA kind of does what it does. And it's basically the sequence of the nucleotides in DNA will create the sequence of the amino acids in a protein. So basically, the code in DNA creates the code of proteins. Uh, proteins are built off of DNA. And this is the, the importance of DNA. These hereditary information uh, that's being passed along is the structure of the proteins itself. So where is DNA found? Well, in a eukaryotic cell, it's found in the nucleus. Um, it's also, you know, there's a little bit found in the mitochondria, a little bit found in the chloroplast, uh, but the actual cell's DNA is found in the nucleus. In a prokaryotic cell, it's found in the nucleoid region, which is basically in the cytoplasm. All somatic cells have the same DNA. So what does this mean? <clears throat> well, what is a somatic cell? A somatic cell is the same as a body cell. So basically, all the cells in your body have the same DNA in them. Uh, the code uh, found in your cells of your toe is the same as the code found in the cells of your eyeball or your tongue or your heart. Uh, all of these cells have the same DNA. The difference is um, proteins that are made in your stomach are not the same proteins that are made in your eyeball. So the idea is that your cells can kind of shut off, turn on, turn off, which portions of the DNA will be creating proteins. So even though all of your cells have all of your body's uh, coding for proteins, it doesn't mean that each of those cells are going to be doing the same thing. Obviously, we know the differences between your kidney cells and your um, heart cells are going to be doing different things. So somatic cells are the 
body cells. Um, but there's a couple different uh, cells that are in us. Our gametes, um, the sperm and the eggs uh, that are found in us, they do not have the same DNA as the rest of the cells in our body. They have a subset of that DNA. And so uh, if you have eggs or if you have sperm, those particular cells are going to have half the number of DNA that the somatic cells have. And we'll talk much more about this later when we're talking about meiosis and how those cells divide and uh, how that DNA is split up. But basically the idea here is all of our body cells, except for these gametes, have the same DNA in them. So what is the structure of DNA? DNA is a nucleic acid. It's one of those macromolecules that we learned way back when in the beginning of the semester. Uh, they are composed of a long chain of nucleotides. Nucleotides are the monomers that create the polymer DNA. Each nucleotide has three components. The five carbon sugar, uh, and it might not be well defined here, but it is pointing to this molecule right here, the five carbon sugar. And this is deoxyribose. Uh, deoxyribose, again, is missing that oxygen, and that oxygen would be right here uh, if it were RNA, but this is DNA, so it's not there. It's, there's no OH, it's just an H. But this is our five carbon sugar. The nitrogenous base is here, uh, and this has nitrogen in it. Um, it will be the when we talk about the different types of nucleotides, this nitrogenous base will be different for the four different nucleotides found in DNA, and we'll talk about those. Nitrogenous base. The phosphate group, that is this right here, the phosphate group. Now, you might see this on the quiz, um, and then whenever you see this elsewhere, I want you to know that this is not... When I, when I ask for the three components, I'm not asking for phosphorus, nitrogen, carbon, and you think that those are the three components. No. Those are part of the components, but it's the phosphate group, which does contain phosphorus, but it is the phosphate group, the nitrogenous base, which does contain nitrogen. Sometimes it's called a nitrogen base, but it is not just nitrogen. Nitrogen is a single atom, a single element. It is a nitrogenous base. Even nitrogen base works for me. And a five carbon sugar. If you give me sugar, if you label it as deoxyribose, uh, five carbon sugar, yes. But if you label it as carbon, that is incorrect. Even if you just label it as five carbons, that is also incorrect because there's much more to it than that. So please understand these components and know that they are not just an element. Uh, and they are all put together by covalent bonds. Um, so they're, you know, strongly put together, sharing, uh, new, um, sharing electrons uh, within to make this molecule. And this will be important, the fact that these are covalent bonds, because later we'll talk about how uh, there are uh, hydrogen bonds involved with uh, the creation of the larger molecule DNA. But don't be confused by that. This nucleotide is created with covalent bonds. The four different types of nucleotides that make up DNA are cytosine, adenine, thymine, and guanine. Now, what makes them different is the nitrogen base, the nitrogenous base uh, that is attached to it. These are, what are, these are what makes these nucleotides different. The sugars are all the same, the deoxyribose. The phosphate group are all the same. Even though this one is slightly looks different, these are all the same. Uh, it is the nitrogenous base that makes them different. 
uh, the four, uh, so these are what are found in, in DNA uh, when we talk about RNA. Uh, this list might be a little different. There's no might be to it. It will be a little different. Uh, but right now we're focusing on DNA. So just remember adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. Uh, between this group, there are some slight differences. Uh, adenine and guanine are considered purines. They have a two-ring nitrogen base structure. You see that there are two rings here, two rings. The pyrimidines have a single one-ring nitrogen base structure. So cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines. Adenine, guanine are purines. Later, we will see how the a uh, purine and a pyrimidine are attracted to one another, the adenine and thymine, and the cytosine and guanine. And they will be the complementary pairs of DNA. When we discuss how these nucleotides are put together, um, we need to look at the carbons of the sugar. And so, um, these carbons, which are labeled here, so the sugar is in the center, the carbons that are on the outside uh, of this sugar molecule are labeled 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, 5 prime. The reason that they're labeled is to look at the orientation of this molecule, how it is set up. Uh, is it, uh, you know, is 5' prime going to be at the top of the molecule, or if you flip it around, uh, is 5' prime going to be at the bottom of the molecule? And the reason being here is uh, you'll see uh, that these DNA sides are put together where one is going in one direction and one's going the other. So the phosphate group is always attached to this 5' prime carbon. Down here, this 3' prime carbon, is where the next phosphate will come in and attach. And so you will have, uh, you will have that, that the phosphate of the next nucleotide coming in and attaching right here. So the 5', the five prime carbon is attached to its own phosphate. The 3' prime carbon is attached to the other nucleotide's phosphate. So understanding these, remembering these prime numbers, these two are the most important uh, when we're talking about the direction of, and it'll come in a little, uh, you'll see it a little bit more on the next slide, why, um, how we use this five prime to three prime or, or vice versa. So now that we know a little bit about the nucleotides themselves, now we're going to talk about how they are put together to make a DNA molecule. So here, we just have a small little snippet of the DNA molecule. Uh, we have a double helix structure. So here we have a strip of nucleotides. So that, that big picture that we saw before is this. Phosphate group, sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So this is a nucleotide stacked onto another nucleotide another nucleotide, another nucleotide. And then the other side, there's another strip of nucleotides. And you can see how they are put. Uh, you can see adenine is combining with thymine, guanine is combining with cytosine, and that's because they're complementary bases. Uh, getting ahead of myself. So the, the, the molecule of DNA is thought to be like a ladder. I like to think of it more of a spiral staircase because it's not just straight, uh, it curves like a spiral staircase and um, spirals down as you go down the molecule. The sides of this molecule, the sides of the ladder, if you will, are the phosphates and sugars. On this side, you can see phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. On the other side, Sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. Um, and that is the parts of that nucleotide being stacked on top of each other. 
the nitrogen bases, the nitrogenous bases found in the center make the rungs of this ladder. And these are the parts of the nucleotides that, that make up these center parts. Um, and this is where we see the complementary basing, the complementary pairing happening. Adenine combines with thymine. You have an adenine, and then it matches to the other side. You always will have a thymine. They always match to one another. As you can see, there are two hydrogen bonds. These dotted lines represent hydrogen bonds. These two hydrogen bonds kind of link these two together like two puzzle pieces. When we look at the guanine and cytosine, the other complementary pairs, they have three hydrogen bonds that fit them together like puzzle pieces. So every time you will see a guanine, it will be paired with the cytosine. Every time you see an adenine, it will pair with a thymine when, we're, when we are dealing with DNA. And in the center that connects this this portion of the large molecule to this portion of the large molecule, you have all of these hydrogen bonds down the center. So hydrogen bonds are connecting these portions of the molecules together. The rest of the molecule is put together by covalent bonds, but this down the center is hydrogen bonds. The two strands are anti-parallel to one another. That means that they are in reverse order. As you can see, you know, this phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar is different on the other side. Sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate. And that kind of goes along with the fact that it's reversed. You can see how it's reversed, but even more so looking at that five prime. So this part of the sugar, this uh, carbon of the sugar is five. This one is three. So this side is going five prime to three prime. Five prime at the top, three prime at the bottom. So the top carbon is a five prime, the bottom carbon is a three prime. When you look on the other side, it's reversed. Three prime is now at the top and five prime is at the bottom. So it's just basically saying that, you know, there are these same strips of nucleotides, but one is upside down in comparison to the other. Um, when we look at DNA, understanding these two terms is a big one. Um, so DNA is organized into chromosomes. Sometimes when we talk about chromosomes, we always we think about these large uh, condensed chromosomes, which we'll get into more in mitosis and meiosis. Uh, it could be chromatin, which is just loose DNA, um, not highly condensed, but just loose DNA uh, that's wrapped around these histones. Uh, so even though chromatin is not as highly condensed as a chromosome, uh, it's still pretty condensed because it's wrapped around these histones. Um, but the terms here, genome, this is all of the genetic material of a specific organism. You see all of these chromosomes that's found in this cell? All of them put together creates the genome of that organism. A gene is a small, well, it's not necessarily small. It is a portion of DNA that carries the information of a single protein. So out of this long strip of DNA, you know, it could start here and end here. Um, basically, this is a portion of the DNA that has the coding of nucleotides that are going to be decoded to make the code of amino acids of proteins. Uh, so the, you know, deciphering the code of DNA to make the code of a protein. Uh, and this will be our next lab when we're looking at transcription and translation. Um, but basically, Knowing the difference here, a genome is all of the DNA. A gene is a subset of the DNA that basically creates a single protein. That protein could be affecting the color of your eyes. Uh, it could be the color of your hair. It could be uh, a particular enzyme that's found in skin cells. Uh, there are lots of different types of genes. 
So in today's lab, uh, you will be not only going through an online kind of uh, looking at these different structures and labeling things and looking at them a little closer of DNA, but then the second portion, you'll be doing an actual lab, an experiment. Uh, you will be extracting the DNA of a strawberry. And this is kind of cool. It might not seem as cool as you're going through the first couple steps, but once you get to the end and you are looking at a pure glob of DNA, that is super interesting. So um, how we're going to do this, and you'll go through all those steps, but you're going to take you're going to take a strawberry, and there's some other suggestions if you don't have a strawberry. I think uh, some other mushy fruits can work, uh, but I'm going to keep talking about strawberries as if you're going to do that. Um, so you want to extract the DNA from your strawberry. So how are you going to do that? Well, first, you're going to put them in a bag and you're going to mash them up by hand. The reason that you're doing that is to break all of those cell walls because they are plant cells. And you need to break those cell walls in order to get to the DNA. So you're breaking it, you're mushing it with your hands, and you're basically breaking lots of those cell walls um, by physical force. Then you will be adding a detergent and salt um, detergent and salt solution uh, into the bag, and then you'll mush that up. And so the reason of this detergent, and I apologize for the details not all being here, but the detergent is going to disrupt the cell membrane. Not only the cell membrane, but all of the organelle membranes. Detergent is uh, the soap, this, uh, the molecules are very similar to a phospholipid and they'll kind of wedge into these membranes, disrupt them, and cause their own bubbles to happen elsewhere, um, leaving the insides now exposed to the solution itself. So the detergent is going to break open, disrupt the membranes. The salt, which you are adding into that same solution, is going to disrupt the proteins, those histones, that the DNA is wrapped around. So it's going to untwine the DNA uh, from the proteins that are kind of keeping them condensed. Uh, so the detergent will break open the membranes. The salt will disrupt those protein histones. Then you will add, um, and these are all kind of as you're mushing it around and, and things. Then you take a then you take a portion of that solution and you put it into a vial, a um, a test tube. And then you'll add really cold ethanol or rubbing alcohol, some sort of alcohol. And that is going to precipitate the DNA. So basically, it's going to cause it so that the DNA is not as sticky uh, to itself and to other molecules. And so then you'll, it will leave it as pure, the pure DNA, so it's not sticking to other things. And it will separate from the rest of the solution. The rest of the solution will be this pink solution at the bottom and then the top will be your globby DNA and then you'll take it out and you'll look at it and it is going to be this pure glob of DNA but remember all of these parts and this is part of the part of the lab itself is you know all of these steps what are these different solutions doing how are they helping uh, and making sure that you remember that because you might see this on the quiz or a practical in the future